Now, Reki Pharmaceuticals has kicked off a new phase in its clinical trial, testing a promising anti-infection treatment called Reki 327. This trial could lead to a breakthrough treatment for severe infections like UTIs and sepsis, which impact millions worldwide. So to cut across the details, Reki CEO James Graham joins me up on the desk. You guys have been very busy of late. I see there's quite a lot that's been happening. We certainly have, and it's great to be with you. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much for coming in. So before we actually get to this announcement, there's a few other things that have been happening. And I did a little bit of research because you spoke with us in about, I think, September, October last year, yeah, just after right. you'd done yep. an issue. That's right, correct? exactly. Yeah, Fidelity took 7.7% ownership of our company. Uh, and most of the, in fact, all the directors participated in the raise. And we raised around, oh, quick, I've got to remember my stats, about $12 million uh, between institutions and existing shareholders. Okay, and I was just noting here that last Friday um, you announced a $11 million R&D rebate to also just improve your cash positions. Look, absolutely. One is uh, dilutionary affecting the capital structure, which of course was the one completed in October, which put us in an excellent position. This is non-dilutionary, a non-dilutionary cash injection to the company. In fact, it's in entirely unprecedented in a few fold. One is it's capturing our R&D rebate uh, of the last financial year, but two, it's actually forward facing. So it's capturing expenditure we anticipate uh, incurring, but receiving the cash benefit here today without any consequence to our intellectual property or similar. So I really see it as a fantastic um, padding or foundation uh, supporting our cash position to get ahead with these clinical studies. Mm, absolutely. And you've also announced a major deal in Indonesia recently. Can you run yeah. us through that one? Oh, look, that was. Uh, that is extraordinary, the opportunity in Indonesia. Uh, we have, or they have, uh, 278 million persons worldwide each year. Over 10% of the population has diabetes. And if you have diabetes, you, a few things happen. One, you're twice as likely to get an infection. Two, about 35% of those with diabetes get a diabetic foot ulcer, which becomes uh, mm. infected. The, the uh, uh, therapy for that is most commonly amputation. And three, if you do have a surgery, any type of surgery, you're extremely like to, likely to get infected. And of course, four, uh, urinary tract infections are prevalent. So we look to support or own, if I uh, think capitalistically, that infectious disease crisis from the underlying diabetic foot infection through to the all out um, morbidities or comorbidities that occur with uh, diabetes. Uh, urinary tract infections are 30% of septic infections, which is uh, the largest, most expensive condition treated to date. So Indonesia has been a real, rather than us pushing, it's mm. they pulling to have access to new medicine. As uh, World Health and Pew Charitable Trusts uh, say, we are the most clinically advanced new class of antibiotic in the world at this time and the first in over 40 years. So it's a privileged position to be in. Wow, so just run us through uh, 327 and these, these tests that you're doing because um, you've got four infusion times. Just break it down simplistically what the results actually mean. Yeah, look, we, we take a portfolio approach. Yeah. So we jump between IV for being straight into human vein, which is focused upon urosepsis. So the underlying urinary tract infection, I mentioned 30% of septic patients have, through to the all-out blood-poisoned or bacteria-ridden mm. patient, which is sepsis or broad-spectrum mm. sepsis. Uh, that's one of our programs. The FDA is, uh, to my knowledge, we are the only qualified infectious disease candidate for that, according to the FDA. We've completed uh, dosing diabetic foot uh, infected patients out of New South Wales' uh, leading teaching hospital in Liverpool. All patients had a complete response. We take that uh, topical uh, method of administration, having uh, dosed with Professor Fiona Wood and colleagues on burn wound patients out of Western Australia, to now adopt that into Indonesia and across to the US, where we're very active with um, groups like the US Department of Defense. Mm, it sounds absolutely amazing. Um, what sort of time frame before this new class of, um, it's interesting, it's a synthetic anti-infective, is it? It's the very first, that's right. So we actually call it an antibiotic for simplicity in communication. All antibiotics are naturally derived. Bacterial fungi, you find them, you cultivate them out, you put yeah. them against the offending. It's kind of not inventive. We've began with first principles in mind. Uh, it's wholly synthetic, means it has design properties, works with works and keeps on working with repeated use, plus a synthetic met uh, method of manufacture, 
rather than expensive time consuming cultivation of all existing antibiotics. So beginning with the end in mind, putting against the challenge that is, and we're getting success in doing that. What's the lead time before your product could potentially you know, go into market? From a portfolio perspective, uh, where we see a topical administration, which is the lower hanging fruit or the easier mm -hmm. me um, method of administration and um, less regulatory burden, if I suppose, yep. just because it's not as invasive. You're really looking at twofold. One, uh, through the Australian and uh, FDA as is our primary focused uh, pathway, which could be some 18 to 24 months to a, to a, to a revenue, and I think uh, could be quite profitable from there or under the Indonesia pathway, which should be positioned as a registrational phase three study, initially in a topical form. Uh, we'll define what, what that looks like uh, in the near term, which could be a, an even faster regulatory track uh, and path to revenue there too. But really as each one drops in, you're looking at unmet medical needs, so not serviced by existing antibiotics, mm. of large patient populations, really Western patient populations, uh, where you have price monopolies. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fascinating. And in terms of um, at what point, if you were starting to see some adverse side effects in these tests, when would they start to throw up? To throw up or to show up? Well, I think it's throw well, up. Well, throw well, up in a, the, yeah, sorry, not literally <laughs> no, no, throw no, up, but show up. That would be considered an adverse event. Yeah, well, um, quite. Not a serious <laughs> adverse event, depending on what comes up. But, but look, you, you really, um, the goal, frankly, from a, when it's a safety study, you're looking for, for effects. Uh, you increase the dose consistently, uh, whether it be increase in concentration or narrow the time of, of administration to obviously have a natural reaction, uh, reactionary period. You're trying to get a side effect. You're actually trying to break a sweat or to see a change in telemetry or change in organ function or mm. change, change in... We haven't seen any. In fact, mm. the only thing we've really seen uh, in some cases is stinging around the infusion site Look, if you've got sepsis, you're going to be an organ failure anyway, so a little bit of stinging is not of any consequence. No, quite. What's the significance of your synthetic drug um, versus the traditional drugs there? Is it because there's a lot of um, antibiotic resistance emerging? Is that one of the key reasons why Recky has been you know, pursuing this? Yeah, look, we, we work and we keep on working with repeated use. Uh, I, remember I, I remember the days you'd go to the doctor, say five, ten years ago, they'd say, take this antibiotic prescription for whatever your little infection may be mm. uh, and you'll get better. Now you go there with the same infection, whatever it may be, and they say, take this prescription and make sure you complete the follow-on repeats. Yeah, it's mm. the same drug. The bacteria yeah. are mutating, the antibiotics are no longer keeping up. Mm. And that, in our eyes, is factually antibiotic resistance occurring so the faster you can get on top of a patient infection, the better the patient outcome, the reduction on the pharma economic burden that takes place through the healthcare system carrying this, and of course, who doesn't want a product that actually works?